everyone, I wanted to show you one of the simplest things to do with Adobe Photoshop, and that is to add text or lettering to your picture. So let's give it a try here. Let's go ahead and open up a picture that we want. I have one saved on the desktop right now. Okay, so I have a picture here, and I want to add some wording to it. You might want to use this when you have a poem or um, lyrics from a song or just a phrase that you want to share along with a beautiful picture. And to do so, if you look on the left hand side menu, there's your toolbox. And if you don't see this on the left hand side where my arrow is showing, you can go up here to view across the top toolbar and scroll down, or I'm sorry, to window and scroll down and make sure that tools is check marked. Here it is. So it's check marked here. So I just unchecked it so you see the toolbox disappeared. We're gonna hit on Windows and Tools. It's check marked, so now you see your toolbox on the left hand side. The T is what you want to click on to add text. So we're gonna click on the T, it's activated, and now you'll see this your arrow of your mouse has turned into this little um, picture with like, it looks like an eye. If you click on anywhere on the picture, hold down the left mouse button and drag that rectangle out, then this is going to be the area where your text will lay. So once you have that activated, you'll see how on the top toolbar here now we have it gives you the choices if you'll follow the arrow with me on the top toolbar, the direction of the text, the text font, if you want the text to be bold, italic, or so forth. And what I like about Adobe is when you click on these drop down menus for the different text, it'll give you a sample of what that text looks like. Many times they have strange names that gives you no idea at all, but if you look at the sample on the right hand side, it'll give you an idea of what it will look like. So in this case, let's choose something um, nice and simple. I'm going to use papyrus here, so I'll click on that. And I want my font to be, we'll try it with 36 points first. If that doesn't work, we can always resize it. And if you look here, this is something similar to Word where if you want it aligned to the left, centered, or towards the right. And this box here, it looks white right now, but this is one of the more important boxes. It's going to be setting the color of your text. So at this point, it's white text, which would look kind of boring on this picture. So double click it. And here you can choose the color that you want your text to be. I want this to be a sort of a greenish color. So if you look on your main color bar here, let's get into the green area. And from here, the bigger square, you can choose the shade of green that you want your coloring to be. So I do like this forest green color. I'll hit OK for now. And again, we can always change it later if it doesn't work out. Um, and then another to finish up here in the top toolbar, this is for the curvature of your lettering. If you want it to arc, bulge, and so forth. We'll give that a try later, just so you can see what it looks like. So here now you see that your cursor is activated within the text box, so let's start typing something. I'm just gonna type uh, whatever comes off the top of my mind here. So as you can see here, as I type, it's kind of light. This, um, this text is too light for this picture. So I'm gonna highlight it here and let's choose something a little darker and thicker. Let's try this Poplar SGD standard. Okay, roses are red, violets are blue. Who is that sitting there waiting for you? I still don't like the, the way this font look, but let's see what it looks like if we make it a little larger. And to do make any changes to what you've typed, just highlight what you've typed, and then we can go up here to point size for our font size. 
and let's say we go to 60. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that might look a little better. And then anytime you make a change, you'll want to click on this check mark to finalize it. So here again, I'm still not happy. It seems to just be swallowed in by the picture, this green coloring. So I'm going to click on it again to highlight it. And let's change the color, maybe to more orangey color. Let's see if that's going to show up. Okay, and then again, we need a check mark to finalize our, our picture here. I don't like it too much, but I'm thinking with this picture because the background is um, a nature background, there's so many colors, we kind of need to make our text stand out a little bit. And there's several ways you can do that. Um, so let's again highlight our text. And one of the tools you can use here, if you look at the top toolbar, is layer and layer style. And this is where you can really make your text pop. Um, so we're going to use, let's, we're going to try bevel and emboss. And I like this window because if you move it to the side here where you can see both the window and your text, see how we have bevel and emboss, emboss marked? Now you see that um, the lettering is raised. But I don't quite like that yet. So let's see if we can add something else like outer glow. There you go. See, that makes your lettering uh, brighter and kind of glow against that colorful background, stand out a bit. And there are a lot more tools here that you can use. Um, best thing to do is trial and error. You can always undo what you've done uh, before you finalize your picture. So don't be afraid to give that a try. Um, another tool I like to use to make text stand out in a picture that has a very noisy background is stroke. And stroke will, as you see here, it added a black outline basically to all of your text to make it stand out. Um, if we did the stroke, that would kind of take away the outer glow. Um, so let's say we use this for, um, I like the outer glow better actually, so I'm going to undo the stroke. That stroke that we just saw, it was black outline, you can change that color. So I can show you that later. Okay, so we'll just click OK for now. We like our text, so let's say we're looking at this picture, this text looks good, um, but it's still too small. So what you can do is again, click on the text to um, activate that area and you can go to edit pre transform and it will let you transform your text. So you don't have to stick to specific numbers for font sizes. You can actually resize the text to however you want it to be. Okay, so now I've resized this, and then also remember you can always click down on the left mouse button and move the text around to where you think it might best fit. Actually, it looks kind of cute down here, um, but up here is nice also. But I like I like it right there, so I'm going to leave it right there, and then remember to check mark when you're done so that it saves those changes. Um, see I want to change some of my the what I wrote here so I'm gonna click you know if you've gone on to other parts of your picture and you want to go back to the text you can always click on the text toolbar click on here so I want to change this to say who is that sitting there waiting for you to make it the the lines shorter and fit more together so roses are red violets are blue who is that sitting there waiting for you and then check mark again. And then another neat tool that's now available with Adobe Photoshop, the newer version, is this 3D. This 3D is a bit complicated, but there are some simple tools you can use from it. So if you click on it, give it a moment here to work, you'll see, you'll say yes here. You see how the wording changed to 3D? And you can actually you see how the plane of where the word letters are sitting? See how you can change it around different. So say I do something like this. And then there are other details that you can change. Um, I'm not that professional to know how to use them all, but again, I like to just sit there and kind of figure things out and see what I like to use. Okay, so let's say we keep it that way. And then you can just click anywhere, I believe, here. So click on text again. Click anywhere on the left-hand toolbar to, to leave it 
to, to save those changes. Um, this 3D really doesn't match for this photo, so I'm going to go ahead and undo, and I'll show you up here. You can go to Edit and Step Backwards. Edit, Step Backwards one more, again, and there you go. We're back to our original. So a good trick with this is on your keyboard, if you go Control Alt Z, that will be will help you to go backwards without having to go up to the top menu. Sometimes when you're working very fast on a, a Photoshop picture, it, some of the keystroke shortcuts will really help you out. So I hope that helps you to get started by adding some lettering to your pictures. Um, and again, don't be afraid to give different things a try. You can always go step backwards. Oh, and also before you leave, make sure you save your picture. Um, there's two types of ways you can save it. The first is if you just hit save, it will save it as a Photoshop document. You most likely will want to have a Photoshop type document so that you can go back in and change it in the future. Okay. So let me just say short poem. That's all I'll name this and I'll save it. Now this Photoshop document you probably won't be able to upload anywhere but it does give you the file that you need to go in and make changes in the future. To save the picture as something that you can upload to different areas you want to save it as a JPEG image. That's the most common one. So JPEG, you leave the title the same and hit save and it'll ask you if you want to save it as a high quality, low, medium, or maximum. So I usually just leave it at 8. That seems to work well. And just hit OK. So now you have a JPEG image which can be uploaded anywhere, uh, such as Facebook um, or email to a friend. And then you also have a Photoshop version of the document which will allow you to go in and edit. Okay, so hope you have some fun with that. Let me know with the comments below if you have any questions. Thank you.